So this is uh, our practice midterm. Here we're going to go through many questions that are almost identical. Almost identical. They're very similar to the questions on the midterm. All right. So obviously it's not the same exact thing, but it's very similar to it. So how do we tackle this one? Normally you look at the inside of the parentheses and see what you could do in there. What could he do in there? Anybody? What could he do inside of the parentheses? You could simplify, but like what, what type of simplification? You, there you go. You could cancel out X's. You could cancel out Y's. There's three X's on top. All three, let me change it with the different color, cancels. All three cancels with three of these. And there's going to be two left over on the bottom. There's one Y on the bottom that cancels with one of the two up on top, and you'll have one left up on top. So let's rewrite what we have. On the inside of the parentheses, you have a negative 3 up on top, a y up on top, and a 2x on the bottom. And of course, we still have the outside exponent of negative 3. Now, what do we do with the outside exponents that are outside of parentheses? The x has a 2. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Um, so what do we do with the outside negative 3? Distribute it to each and every exponent, right? So when you think about it, there's an exponent of 1 on the negative 3, there's an exponent of uh, 1 on the y, exponent of 1 on the 2, and there's an exponent of 2 on the x. Now you could distribute, um, but then you're going to have a bunch of negative exponents, so you're going to have to flip all of them, right? Or you could flip everything first, change that to a positive, and then distribute the 3. It's really up to you whether you want to distribute first and then flip the whole thing, or if you want to flip the whole thing first, and then distribute a positive 3, not a negative 3. So what do you guys want to do? Flip it first? Sounds great. Let's flip it first. So you're going to have a 2x squared up on top. On the bottom, you're going to have a negative 3y. It's still negative. And outside, on the outside, you're going to have a positive 3 now. Okay. So now what we're going to do is actually distribute that outside uh, exponent of 3 to each and every inside exponents. So when I distribute, it's going to go right here onto the 2, right there, right there, and right there. So we're going to end up with 2 to the 3rd. You're going to end up with x to the power to a power, you multiply x to the 6th. On the bottom, you have negative 3y. So the negative 3, it might be a good idea to put that in parentheses. It doesn't really make a difference in this case, but like, what if that would have been an outside exponent of 2? Then that negative 3 would have changed to positive, correct? But right here in this case, yeah, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is still going to be negative. But anyways, we also have the y to the third power also. So let's simplify everything that we can, and our final answer is going to be 8 up on top. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. x to the sixth. On the bottom, you're going to have a negative 27 y to the third and I'll also tell you this on the answer on the multiple choice answer because it is multiple choice you're probably gonna have that negative sign in the middle question so this is the answer hopefully we understand how to do it because number one on the midterm is exactly like this except maybe a number or two changes notice there's a a, B, C, D, because that's how it's going to look like with your multiple choice answers right here. I just deleted them, and I changed a couple of items up here on the top. So number two on this practice midterm, uh, we're going to use different rules of exponents. We could go with uh, rule one of exponents that says if you're multiplying three different terms with the same base, you could just add up all the exponents. So what is negative 5 plus negative 4 plus 7? X to the negative 2, that's right. Now you're not going to see that on your multiple choice answers because there's this other rule of exponents that says that if you have a negative exponent, you have to move it to the other side. Now in this case, it's not even a fraction. You need to make it look like a fraction. So just put a line right there and then grab this thing, move it to the other side. So your final answer is going to be, there's nothing left up on top. When there's nothing left up on top, you have to put the 1 up there. And obviously, the x to the second becomes positive because you moved it down to the bottom. 
And that's your answer right there. 1 over x squared. Sugar? Yeah. Okay. So far, everybody has an A, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Number three. Copy that guy down, and we'll do it in a couple of seconds. I'll repeat that. Synthetic division is the way to handle this problem. Okay? It's asking you to divide this cubic polynomial, or actually cubic trinomial, divided by this linear binomial. And it's really easy to do synthetic. All you got to do is put the opposite of the number that you see with the x, which will be a negative 4. And then you have to make sure that you write down all the coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers that are in the front of each term and the constant in order, and even representing the powers that are not there, that are missing. So the coefficient of the first term is 2. You're going to write down a 2 right there. The coefficient of x squared, there is no x squared, so you have to write a 0. If you don't write that 0, it's going to be wrong. And then you have the coefficient of 2 on the x, and the coefficient of 140, or the constant of 140 at the very end. And you draw your line. Any questions so far? So synthetic division, how does it work? The number, as it comes down, you add it with what's below it. You combine it with what's below, and there's obviously nothing there, so there's a 2 right here. And then what we do is simply take this number, negative 4, multiply it by 2, and put my answer up here. So negative 4 times 2 is? Negative 8. And then as you come down, you add. You combine 0 plus negative 8 is? Negative 8. And then as you go up, you multiply. Negative 4 times negative 8 is? Positive 32. Yeah? And then as you go down, 2 plus 32 is? 34, and as you go up, negative 4 times 34, negative 1, 36, 156, 36, right? So that's a negative 136 up here, and this last number is the remainder, which means that we have a remainder of 4, right? So our answer, the way we're going to write it, is taking the numbers that we have down here, these are the actual coefficients of our answer, and this is the remainder. The remainder has to always go over the original divisor. So let's write out our answer. It's 2, x to the what? x to the what? x to the second, that's right. 2x to the second, and then minus 8, minus 8x, and then what? Plus 34, because it's positive 34. And then at the very end, this is a positive 4, so I want to put plus, and I want to put the 4 on top over the original divisor, which is x plus 4. Write that down there, x plus 4. So this is your final answer, including this fraction plus 4 over x plus 4 at the very end. So this one, number 4, it says if r of x equals 2x to the second minus 5x plus 7, evaluate for r of x minus 3. This is that section where we dealt with functions, and we added functions, subtracted functions, we plugged in values into functions. Same thing here. Uh, let's start by saying this. If you had r, or why did I say f? If you had r of, let's say, 2, what are you supposed to do if I ask you to do r of 2? Plug in 2, right? So you plug in a 2 right here, plug in a 2 right there. So right here you'd have negative 10, right here you'd have 4 times 2 is 8. Then you do the math. So it's easy to, to remember that what you do with this is simply plug it into the place of the x. And the smartest way of doing that is to write the function over again, but instead of x's, put parentheses. Now, I'm not, they're not asking me to do r of 2, so I'm not going to plug in a 2 right there. That was just me explaining what you usually do when you have a, a value inside your parentheses. What do, what do they want us to plug in right here? They want us to plug in the binomial x minus 3. So inside this parentheses, what am I going to plug in? x minus 3. And right here, x minus 3. You know what? I didn't give you... So ladies and gentlemen, what do I start with? What do I start with? Do I start by multiplying, subtracting, exponents? What do I start with? Exponents. Exponents, right? PEMDAS. you got to start with parentheses. There's nothing to do inside of the parentheses. It's just x minus 3s. 
So let's jump to exponents. So I want to focus in on this part right here. Let me zoom in a little. So you write the x minus 3 two times, and then you distribute. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Of course, the middle terms could be combined. So you're going to get a trinomial x squared minus 6x plus 9. And that belongs inside parentheses. Why? Because this is really this squared. So I still need to bring down the 2 that's on the outside. Okay. Let me take a look at the rest of my expression here. So I also need to distribute the minus 5 into these two. So I'm going to have minus 5x plus 15. Now I might as well bring down the plus 7 that's at the very end over here. I'm going to get this plus 7 and just bring it down. So we have all this stuff. We have subtraction, addition, addition, and multiplication. Let's continue to multiply. 2 times x squared, that's 2x squared. 2 times negative 6x is negative 12x. 2 times 9 is positive 18. Let me bring down the rest, the minus 5x. And you know what? 15 plus 7 is what? Okay, nobody's here with me. 22. Now, we have this large polynomial. Let's combine like terms. So I'm going to combine the x's. We have a negative 12x and a negative 5x. That's going to become negative 17x. Now let's combine uh, the positive 18 with the positive 22. That's going to be 40, correct? Positive 40. And then you're going to bring down the 2x squared out in front that we didn't combine with anything. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our final answer for that problem. So on this one, they ask us to analyze a graph. They want us to describe the end behavior. They want us to determine whether it represents an odd or even degree function and state the number of real zeros and if the A value is positive or negative. So um, is this an odd degree function or an even degree function? It's odd because there's an end behavior down here and up here. If it were even, they would both, bo both end up up here or both down here. But as you can see, it's up here and down here. So that's an odd amount going up, an odd amount going down. Again, if it were an even degree, it'd be both of them up here or both of them down here. <clears throat> anyway, let's talk about the end behavior. And of course, this is a multiple choice test. So you're going to be able to read the answers and they're all going to be written like this, but I rewrote the answer with blank spots. That way you could identify. So as x approaches blank, f of x approaches what? What would, you, what would you put in right here and right here? As x approaches what? x is going left and right. Let's look at it going to the left. So as x approaches negative infinity, right? f of x approaches what? Negative infinity. Because as you go to the left, it goes down. Negative infinity. Wow, that's ugly. Um, and as x approaches positive infinity, as it goes this way, I should put a positive infinity right here, what happens to the f of x? Positive infinity also. I hope you guys understand that. It's really easy. Um, we also already said that this was a odd degree function. And how many zeros does it have? Remember, zeros are x-intercepts. So you have 1, the actual answer is negative 4, this one's like negative 1 point something, this one's 0, this one's 1 1.8 or 1.9, something like that, this one's probably a little bit more than 4, but yeah, there is a total of 5 zeros in this case, 5 zeros. That really means that there's 5 answers, 5 real answers, and the A value is obviously uh, positive, because this is a positive, this would be negative. A negative would reflect it on the x-axis. So if it were negative, it'd be ending up up here and down here. But this is the original uh, snake-like curve, the cubic function that has an A value that's positive 1, and behavior down here and up here.